Good afternoon. My name is David Ballinger. I'm the director of the University of Nebraska at Kearney Aviation Program. Welcome to the second annual UNK Aviation Awards. I would like to thank our honored guests here today, administrators, faculty, family, and of course our aviation students. There's no doubt that the past two years have been challenging for our students. Just over 25 months ago, the COVID-19 pandemic forced us to ground the flying training portion of our program. However, we were not alone. Flight programs across the world suspended training and the perishable skills of aviation students and operational pilots began to erode. Despite the disruption of our flying training, we took advantage of that opportunity to complete a strategic review of our program and proceeded to institute significantly needed changes to keep it relevant, competitive, and adaptable to the needs of today's aviation industry. Now that we have hopefully put most of the COVID-19 restrictions behind us, we are here to celebrate our students' accomplishments in the face of this unprecedented global challenge. But before I do that, I'd like to take this opportunity to share with you some of the positive changes and key milestones we have achieved within our program. They include hiring two new aviation faculty members, the first is a highly seasoned ex-military aviation commander and senior flight instructor with experience teaching international students on transport helicopters and tilt rotor aircraft. We are proud to have a West Point graduate and United States Marine Corps Lieutenant Colonel Dan Smith join the ranks of UNK and help lead our aviation students towards achieving their goals in the aviation industry. Our second faculty member joining us, also a military veteran, previously held the position of Vice President of Operations at Continental Airlines and is a founding member of JetBlue Airways. We're extremely fortunate to have landed Captain Al Spain from the corporate aviation world to help guide our students towards smooth skies. These two new faculty members are bona fide aviation leaders and have solidified the emerging reputation of UNK's reinvigorated aviation program as a force to be reckoned with in terms of our national and international academic standing. Another milestone of achievement is a shared venture between UNK's aviation program and our English Language Institute. Our new international civil aviation organization recognized aviation English course under the leadership of Assistant Director Tracy Gunderson and her team of aviation English instructors has been up and running for over a year and has garnered significant attention from international aviation recruiters, some of whom are with us here today. The impact of our English Language Institute's Aviation English course and testing protocol should not be underestimated in its positive influence on our program. Despite the global impact of COVID-19, over the past year, we've been working with international recruiters to bring aviation students to UNK from countries in Central America, South America, the Caribbean, Africa, the Middle East, and South Asia. A third significant milestone of our revitalized aviation program is represented in our rapid shift toward meeting current aviation industry needs. In bringing our program in line with international aviation accreditation standards, we have added four new courses starting in fall 2022, including aviation history, aviation meteorology, aviation human factors, and crew resource management. And with new program content comes a new name. Moving forward, we are now recognized as the UNK Aviation Program with an emphasis in either professional pilot or management. This now aligns us with the nomenclature of the Aviation Accreditation Board International as we strive to achieve and maintain a level of professional performance, integrity, and quality that entitles UNK to hold the confidence of the international education community the global aviation industry, and the public that we serve. With positive changes and a re-energized aviation program have come new opportunities for UNK. Over the past two years, we've been working closely with the United States Air Force to establish a flight training partnership. Just a few weeks ago, we were very pleased to announce that UNK has been selected as one of only 25 universities to host United States Air Force Junior Regular Officer Training Program Flight Cadets for this summer. UNK and our flight training provider Nebraska Flight School will be training 12 Air Force cadets who will come to us from Alabama, Arizona, California, Colorado, 
Florida, Illinois, South Carolina, and Texas. The cadets will attend classes here on campus at Discovery Hall and fly at the Kearney Regional Airport as they pursue their private pilot certificate, paving the way for them to choose UNK Aviation as their next educational step toward becoming aviation professionals in industry or joining any of the U.S. military branches. Our recent faculty and program changes represent our ambitious vision to become a world leader in aviation education and flight training. Our strategic goal is to anticipate emerging flight training opportunities while preparing our students for tomorrow's aviation industry will continue into 2023 and the years to come. We will continue to seek out innovative approaches to improve aviation teaching and learning, explore emerging aviation technology in the classroom and on the flight line, and embrace disruptive and prescient research to maximize the operational performance of our graduates. A year ago, I stood here and proclaimed that UNK Aviation will not be content to simply achieve the minimum required national and international standards. I said that we intend to set the bar for all aviation educational institutions. Of that, I am now even more confident. This afternoon, we'll be awarding three types of certificates. The first will be Aviation English Certificates. The second will be UNK Solo Wings. And the third will be Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, flight certificates, including Private Pilot Certificate, Commercial Pilot Certificate, Instrument Rating, and Certificated Flight Instructor. Our first awards are Aviation English Certificates. These certificates represent the achievement of the International Civil Aviation Organization, or ICAO, Level 4 Aviation English Equivalency. Flight students from around the world must be at ICAO Level 4 proficiency or higher to be permitted to fly solo during training. And pilots must also maintain operational Level 4 Aviation English proficiency to be employed in the commercial aviation industry. The Aviation English Certificates will be presented by Tracy Gunderson, Assistant Director of International Education, International Recruitment, Marketing, and the English Language Institute. But before we begin, it's fair, it's fair to say <clears throat> that without Tracy and her team's dedication, perseverance, and appreciation of the unique needs required by aviators in terms of technical vocabulary and cockpit phraseology, we would not have been able to develop and implement our Aviation English program. Research shows a direct positive correlation between aviation English proficiency and flight training, success in non-native English speakers. With the majority of our international students using English as a second language, our new aviation English course and stringent testing protocols ensure that our international students can matriculate into our aviation program with the industry required language levels necessary for efficient flight training progress and operational proficiency. Not only does this establish a high standard for our flight students in terms of flying safely and effectively, but also ensures UNK can confidently recruit, train, and graduate non-native English speaking students. Our Aviation English Language Program is recognized by international airlines around the world and makes UNK one of only a few university flight programs capable of accurately assessing the proficiency levels of international flight students and training them to industry standards. UNK's aviation program now satisfies those industry standards and employment qualifications for aviation English language training. However, like flying, the effective use of language is a highly perishable skill and requires all pilots to continue to practice their English language communications necessary to function safely and effectively from the cockpit. With Tracy and her team's continued engagement with our program, our international students have direct access to individualized one-on-one -on -one training to keep them flying. Tracy, if you could please come up to present the certificates. Do I need a microphone? Um, Beth, do you want to join me? Okay. So congratulations to all of you. You have chosen a rigorous academic program in pursuit of your goals to be aviators and um, I congratulate you as you move through your program and reach these different milestones and accomplishments. 
Um, so without further ado, I will call uh, the first Aviation English awardee up. Okay, from Japan, Oki Asakura. From Japan, Hideharu Hayashi. <laughs> Hideharu is a member of the Kappa Nu chapter of the UNK's Aviation Fraternity Alpha Et Aro and was a nominee for this year's UNK Emerging Leader Award. From Japan, Takanori Izokawa. From Nepal, Ashley Meharjan. <laughs> From Japan, Kento Morishima. From Bolivia, Fabrizio Santibanez. <laughs> From Japan, Masahiro Suzuki. From Japan, Suzuna Umeno. Suzuna, unfortunately, is unable to be with us today. And finally, from Japan, Akira Yasue. Thank you, Tracy and Beth. Thank you. Right. Yeah, congratulations. Thanks. But before we move on, I'd like to thank Tracy and her team at the English Language Institute for all their dedication and hard work in support of our aviation program. Without your efforts, we simply would not be able to train our international student pilots to industry professional standards. Our next awards represent a significant achievement in the career of every pilot, and that is the attainment of solo flight status. Flying an aircraft by yourself for the first time has, for many generations of pilots, signified a watershed point in their aviation journey. According to the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, the term solo flight means that flight time during which a student pilot is the sole occupant of the aircraft, or that flight time during which the student performs the duties of a pilot in command. Every student pilot who's gone solo has achieved that special status of pilot in command. Those three words belie enormous responsibility and leadership. A pilot in command, by legal definition, has the final authority and responsibility for the operation and safety of an aircraft's flight. A pilot in command must exhibit superior leadership, consistently sound judgment, rapid yet accurate decision making, physical skill and dexterity, and judicious courage required to take an aircraft safely and efficiently into the sky and return it to the ground. Whether a pilot in command of a commercial airline crew or the sole commander of a small single engine training aircraft, aviators are required to lead by example, exemplifying the sound ethical and moral tenets representative of an aviation professional. And this, perhaps above all other requirements, separates our profession from that of all others. For if, if an aviator makes a mistake in the air or on the ground, hundreds may die. This is what makes aviation education and training unique, because aviation exams are not simply pass or fail, they are live or die. National Transportation Safety Board statistics reveal that in contrast to the excellent safety record of commercial airplanes, 
Small private planes average five accidents per day, accounting for nearly 500 American deaths in small planes each year. This is why we have high standards. And this is why our program can be called a truly professional program. Our students are challenged both academically and physically every day of their journey. They know that aviation training is not for the faint of heart. It is not easy. If it was, everybody would do it. But that is simply not the reality of our program, nor should it be of any aviation program. Pass-fail rates in aviation university programs are difficult to compare with other technical programs. However, make no mistake, the route to success as a professional pilot is one of the most challenging any student can pursue. Statistically, in the United States alone, between 60 to 85 percent of all pilot trainees either drop out or fail their flight training. In contrast, students accepted into medical school suffer a dropout rate of between 10 to 20 percent. While there are many factors to consider in comparing dissimilar occupations such as medicine and aviation, I will hold fast to my assertion that becoming a professional pilot over the course of many years is one of the most physically and psychologically grueling journeys a student can choose to undertake. But the rewards are worth it. To share some of those initial rewards, I'd like to invite UNK's Chief Flight Instructor, Captain Dennis Boisino, to present the UNK Solo Wings and Certificates. Our first recipient is Colin Lewis. And our second recipient is Alexander Thurston. Our next awards are Federal Aviation Administration Flight Certificates. Receiving his private pilot certificate is Takanori Izokawa. Receiving his private pilot certificate is Masahiro Suzuki. <laughs> Receiving his private pilot certificate is Garrett Jackson Campbell. Receiving her private pilot certificate is Emily Nicole Farley. Unfortunately, Emily is not able to be with us today. Emily is the president of the Kappa Nu chapter of the aviation fraternity Alpha Eta Rho and was nominated this year as a UNK Outstanding Student Organization Leader. Receiving his private pilot certificate and instrument rating is Dawson Daniel Coma. Receiving his private pilot certificate is Akira Yasue. <laughs> Akira is also the vice president of Alpha Eta Rho. Receiving his instrument rating and commercial pilot certificate is Colton Hill Reed. And, and last but certainly not least, receiving a Certificated Flight Instructor Rating is Tanner Coe. <laughs> Thank 
you, Dennis. Thank you. Now, these certifications and wings are representative of the incredibly hard work and effort put into both academics and flying training by our students. However, I need to point out perhaps a more important yet less tangible skill that our students are developing, and that is leadership. To all our aviation students, I will say do not neglect the importance of leadership skills as you progress in your aviation career. The U.S. National Transportation Safety Board continues to cite inadequate leadership on the flight deck and pilots' unprofessional behavior as factors in multiple accidents and incidents over the past 10 years. Your leadership skills, already being developed, will become your primary asset as those around you look to you for direction and advice as subject matter experts and decision makers. This change will not happen tomorrow or next week or next month, but in fact, for most of you, already started with your first solo. Continue to strive for perfection. Continue to strive for perfection. Despite public perception, and perhaps tinged by your own well-intentioned beliefs on occasion, pilots are not perfect. We make mistakes. However, the key to a successful professional career as an aviator is to make your mistakes small enough that only you recognize them and then try to make them only once before learning from your errors and improving your skills and decision making. As aircraft commanders, your leadership is only as good as your ability to communicate your intentions and actions to air traffic controllers, your flight crew, maintenance personnel, or your passengers. Changes in our aviation program have required significant effort on your behalf to ensure that you meet, if not exceed, that required communication skill to function as an aircraft commander. Rest assured, you will face difficulties as pilots in command. You will be challenged by your aircraft, the unforgiving and harsh environment in which you fly, and your abilities to make sound judgments and consistent, effective decision making under extreme physical and psychological stress. And you'll require courage not to reluctantly brave the elements, but to say no when asked to exceed the limitations of your professional skills. However, it's important to understand that piloting an aircraft relies on more than just technical and physical skills. It may not be well known outside of the aviation community that in order to achieve the distinction of airline transport pilot, which is the highest certification of a professional pilot, the Federal Aviation Administration and other civil aviation administrations around the world require those applicants to be able to read, speak, write, and understand the English language to ICAO Level 4. Ask any of our international students, and they will tell you that is no easy feat for non-native English speakers. Superior physical skills, cognitive abilities, and linguistic standards aside, perhaps the least understood factor in achieving this pinnacle of professional qualification is the legal requirement for airline transport pilots to quote, be of good moral character. That may seem like a tall order, having the physical skills to fly a multi-million dollar machine six miles high at just under the speed of sound, make logical, reactive, and deductive decisions within restrictive temporal constraints and harsh environmental conditions without succumbing to intrinsic emotional influences, all while expertly leading a multicultural team in close quarters. Yet this is the expectation that our society puts upon our young aviators. For this reason, our aviation faculty places similarly high expectations and standards upon our aviation students. We do this because we have lived our lives as professional aviators and understand what the industry and society expects. It is not an understatement to say that the highest standards achieved in many university aviation programs, or any flight program for that matter, are the lowest standards accepted by the aviation industry. We recognize that, but in contrast, we require a higher degree of professionalism and competencies for our students as they adopt an aviation culture representative of the best aviation organizations in the world. This is what separates the UNK aviation program from all the others, professionalism. 
In closing, our students here today have accomplished the first of many steps in their journey to becoming aviation professionals. To our students, I encourage you to take the time to reflect on your career paths as you go forward and recalibrate your efforts at each step. The operational expectations become higher, the demands greater, and the margins of tolerable error become smaller as you rise in the ranks of your chosen profession. Whether you continue toward becoming an airline transport pilot aircraft commander or airport manager or any other leadership position in the aviation industry, take pride in what you achieved so far and stand tall amongst your loper peers. On behalf of all of us at UNK, the Aviation Program and Nebraska Flight School, I congratulate you on your individual accomplishments and I look forward to seeing you achieve greater milestones in the months and years to come. That concludes our ceremony. Thank you very much for your attendance today and please congratulate our aviation students for their outstanding accomplishments. All guests are invited to depart and I will ask the aviation student certificate recipients to, to remain behind for photos. Thank you very much.